Can you hear me okay, Twan? Yep. Okay, my man. How you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's a pleasure having you on the show. I'm really excited. Um, and, uh, you know, we go way back. You know, I was sitting here uh, doing some homework, and when we went back, and there were some key things that kind of made me remember uh, uh, our journey and, and when we got uh, when we first connected and I remember it was our very first celebrity basketball game in 2001 uh, when you guys came out to Fresno and uh, I had opportunity to hang out with you and and Coolio which we'll talk a little bit about Coolio and and uh, uh, I think at that moment I picked you guys up from the airport it was you uh, Coolio it was uh, Robert Rashad if you remember him uh, which I'm sure yeah. you do and and uh, let me see uh, it was um, inches back when they had that Nike that basketball and everybody was making a little sounds with the uh, basketball and they had uh what sl uh, was it like um some kind of like trampoline league he was in or something like that slam ball or something yeah uh, and then it yeah. was that one guy from the cosby show bud a uh, little bud that used to run around with rudy what's his name <laughs> yep dion richman <laughs> and richman. megan good megan wesley good. Jonathan, kent kent kennell from the park right. who, who, who was the brother Ryan. that uh who in the movie life uh, uh uh you want your cornbread i remember that big brother was there, too. there yeah there was there too i forget about there too. yeah that's there. right so this is back and the reason i remember it was uh back in 01 is because uh uh i had just bought matter of fact my guest tomorrow uh i'm gonna be told we went down and bought two brand new 2001 lincoln navigators and i don't know if you remember that truck because we picked you up in yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the goal i can't believe you remember that man that was 21 years ago bro <laughs> yeah that's crazy because lamont yeah. came because we drove up lamont drove up right no he drove up the second time that's right. what it was first time yeah he didn't come the first time yeah, he came I, to I remember picking you guys up from the airport and i remember uh when we got when i was loading up your luggage uh, I had, like I said, just got the navigator, put some 24s in it. I had the whole back end customized with leather to match the truck and lights. And I remember when I popped the trunk to put your bags in, you looked over at me like, man, what in the heck do you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had it cracking. Yeah, we had a good time. A great time, man. So we're going to get into some of those things. Uh, Twan, first thing I want to ask uh, for those um, who are watching, this is my first live stream. I want to start off with a bang and and I can't think of anyone uh, better than to start off with yourself. We've got a lot of things that you and I are doing in the crypto realm, uh, creating an NFT for you and so forth. But let me just kind of go back a little bit, if you don't mind, and just ask, you know, and I know I asked you this back in 01. How'd you get started in acting, man? I mean, give me that story, if you don't mind. I was playing basketball. I got noticed playing basketball. I ended up getting an agent, and they, they had me go out for the movie that now was called, at the time it was called Coach, but they named it uh, Coach Carter. Wow. They was looking for people who can actually play to where they didn't have to, um, they didn't want to have to use stunt doubles. Cause oh, there was like out of the old movies where they, you know, you take the shot and then it cut to just the shot going in, but they never see you really take the shot. <laughs> it was like, they wanted to actually do it like more authentic. Right. So uh, I ended up meeting a coach and he told me to come in for it. I went in for it, read, uh, I went in for it just for the basketball tryout. Right. Cause I just was, thought I was just gonna try to make, you know, get the tryout done got to try out to actually be an extra or be on one of the other teams. And then um, they told me they liked me to come back and read the next day for one of the characters. And I was like, oh, damn. So I went back and read. I messed up. I thought I was going to um, not book it. And then they called me the next night. It was like, oh, you did excellent. I was like, really? Oh, God. Like I felt like I killed the audition. Wow. wow. And, uh, and I ended up booking it. So the rest was there from, from there on at the time. You know, when I booked it, I felt like now I got to really work perfect the craft and you know if, if they really saying that i could do it then i might really can do it so let's try to do it and make it a profession so i went gung-ho at that point so you're telling me that was your first actual movie yep first job ever in the business wow and it's so crazy because as i got onto uh, the internet and started looking you up i, I seen that you've done almost 70 movies and and tv shows and been on some of the top shows and so really quickly what i want to do is just play a quick clip of a coach card for those people who haven't seen it. What? On the streets of Richmond, they fought what? to get by. Ah! Yo, where you going? Throw some money, man. Struggled to get out. Doing good, bro. And if they had anything left, they brought it to the court. Your boys don't need practice, they need prison. Good afternoon, young man. Are you some preacher, man? Because God ain't gonna do you no good in this neighborhood. Leave the gym. Mm. I ain't scared of nobody, because I'll lay you out. I don't think so. Teachers ain't supposed to touch students. I'm not a teacher. 
I'm the new basketball coach. Now they have a choice. In Richmond, you're 80% more likely to go to prison than college. This contract states that you will maintain a 2.3 grade point average and you will wear ties on game day. Between surviving alone. This is basketball, man. These boys are student athletes. Student comes first. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And standing together. If one man struggles, the entire team struggles. So, yeah, that was definitely a classic twine. Um, I just showed a little clip of it. And uh, so you start off with, um, you know, uh, Coach Carter. I've seen you in so many films. It's funny because even after we became friends, I'd be sitting back at home watching certain things, whether it was Sunset Park or, or other movies. I'm like, wait a minute, Twan's on that show? And it was just like one thing after another. How'd you go from, you know, just trying out to becoming a, a, a movie star to wind up landing one of the biggest gigs that I can think of where you were actually on the number one rated TV show at one point, uh, One Tree Hill. I mean, can you talk a little bit about that and how that all came down? Well, when I did Coach Carter, um, I was already doing One Tree Hill, but okay. uh, I was already doing One Tree Hill at the time. It was a pilot um, at the time my friend Mark Schwann was creating a, creating a show. And, um, and it was called a book of Ravens. And he was like, I remember when he was like, it was like in the early development stages. Right. And he was, yo, I'm doing this. I want you to do it. Cause I had already worked with him and Mike, Mike Tolan and Brian Robbins, really good friends of mine. I worked with them before right. on a, um, a show called uh, four points that I did with Shaquille O'Neal and um, Cheryl Miller, the right. great Cheryl Miller. <laughs> Shaquille yeah, yeah. So, um, we, it won, a, I believe it was an ACE award for best after school special. And actually Robert Richard was on it. Okay. So that's okay. the first thing we did together. So we that's like a family. Like we work with them people already before. And um and uh after we worked with them, they had a, another show that they was doing called Slam. So okay. it was kind of similar to One Tree Hill, but it wasn't because it was basketball based, but it was based on like a junior college. Right, right. So it was called Slam. We had high hopes about the show. It didn't get picked up. Oh. So yeah, so it, it didn't get picked up. Um and uh and they was like we got it we got another one though we working on right now and you know it all comes to pass we're gonna call you and let you know when it happened and that's when they had the book of ravens and they finally got a pickup so he called me in for that i went in and started doing that i played skills on that and then uh mark swan actually wrote coach carter okay so in the middle of us filming he was like oh bet i got another one for you it's called coach carter we it's a true story but, you know, we still going to get basketball players and you already have a fan base now. So we're going to figure out how to get you up in there. And da, 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 da. so they got me up in there. And, and that was that. So it's all in the same circle. That's crazy. You know what I'm That's crazy. Yeah, I'm trying, out to, trying out to be on the, one of the number one shows. I mean, I think that's probably one of your most recognizable uh, shows because, I mean, you can't say One Tree Hill to anyone without them knowing exactly what that is. So that's huge, man. Yeah, and, it, and it's crazy because we still got a diverse, a diverse culture and meaning like a diverse like um, fan base. And it's a cult following, if you know, not in a bad sense, but in a good sense, you know, because no matter how much they try to move the show on a Thursday night, move it to Sunday, move it to Friday when they right. think nobody watching TV, it was like right. they was trying to get rid of the show. Right. But the fans was like, hell no. They kept going to watch it, watch it, watch it, watch right. it. And it kept picking it back up. And nine seasons later, and now we just did a, a, um, a One Tree Hill convention with Friends with Benefits Charity. And we they donated a lot of money to, um, to St. Jude's Children's Hospital for that. So there's a really big, um, really big foundation that we work with. And they, um, we went viral. I, I went live on my Instagram and it went viral. Like, so wow. it was crazy. It was crazy. And and just to imagine that it's doing that. And this is 10 years after the show has been off the air. That's crazy. 10 years. And the fan base is still that crazy. So I, I, I see a reboot coming, but you know, it is what it is. No, I mean, it's amazing, man. When you, you brought up what hospital was that again? Uh, St. Jude. And here's a crazy story back in, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but I remember when we first connected in 01 and we played in the, played in the game together um, and I got to meet all you guys and, and had relationships. I think me and your relationship is probably the closest out of everyone. And then the second will probably be um, I hooked up with uh, Robert Rashad and I hooked up with uh, Khalil Kane. Matter of fact, yep. Khalil, Kane, Khalil yep. invited me out to L.A. and I wound up going to like an underground uh, underground party with him. And it was crazy. I got to see like 
Britney and, and, and different, different actors. And it was like one of those VIPs. You had to be someone or be with somebody to get into that private party. And yep. it, was just, it was just bananas. But uh, uh, when you brought up the hospital, it's crazy because when we did our 01 celebrity game, we actually went. If you remember, we went to Valley Children's Hospital. Yeah, Valley visited, Children's Hospital. And we mm-hmm. visited all the kids in the cancer ward. Remember that? And took pictures and signed autographs and things. Well, here's what's so crazy about that story. That was 21 years ago. And 21 years ago, my little girl was two years old. She's now a nurse at that same hospital. Isn't that crazy? Oh, that's dope. <laughs> that's dope. And uh, you brought up something when we were talking about Robert Rashad. Now, Robert Rashad was a co-host uh, or the co-actor uh, um, with you. He played, if I'm mistaken, he played uh, Samuel L. Jackson's son. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, exactly. it's funny because after our game, it was probably like a year later, I'm sitting in L.A. I was with my, with my, uh, I was with my uh, a friend and uh, someone was hitting me in the back of the head with popcorn. We're in a, just a theater watching a random movie. And, you know, somebody hit me in the head with popcorn. I'm like, and first I thought it was action. So they hit me again. And I'm like, what? And it was dark. The movie was already playing. It was I, actually it was the previews. And I'm like, what the hell? So I get up. I said, let somebody hit me with a popcorn again. And I said it out loud. Bet you won't hit me again. I'm hot. Right. I'm hot. So couple minutes go by, I get hit in the back of the head again. So I jump up, I'm on some Brooklyn, New York stuff, you know where I'm from. I'm hot, I'm, I go up the thing and I just see this dude sitting back laughing. I said, you got a problem, he moved his hand and it was Robert Rashad. I said, you, and I don't know how he reckoned, he must have saw me and my wife come to the theater. I said, this dude <laughs> is a fool. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's a little bro, he always goofy. <laughs> Crazy, so uh, I wanted to get into uh, before asking you a few other things, Coolio, man, and, and rest in peace, uh, our brother Coolio. I, uh, um, for those of you guys who don't know Coolio, he wrote one of the biggest hits, uh, Dangerous Minds, uh, um, and um, that, that's it, right? Dangerous Minds was one of his... Um, uh, that was the movie. The movie it Dangerous Minds. He wrote the... Yeah, the song. Uh, um, what was it? Uh, I can't remember. Gangsters Paradise. Gangsters Paradise. For and it was it was the uh, it was the that was the, the score for the that score for, for that movie. movie. Okay, so so and Kool Aid was really cool, and I get into our story a little bit. But I remember when I first met Kool. This is what really made me realize how cool you brothers were. I picked you up in the Navigator. You guys got in the car, and I had three rows of seats, right? And it was it was all you guys, you Robert Rashad, all those guys. And I remember when Coolio got in the car, uh, everybody had put their luggage in the third seat, and there was no room for him to sit. And so he laid over the luggage. I don't know if you remember that now. He laid mm-hmm. over the luggage. And he's like, I was like, cool. I felt bad because I'm like, I got a mega star with me. And he lays over the luggage. So come on, bro, let's go. And we, I think we wound up finding a restaurant to go eat at. And the whole time he just sitting there yeah. like, got his hand like just talking to him. And I'm sitting there like, this dude is so cool. Um, yeah. And that, that it was actually, if you remember, I had, I had crazy beat in that truck. And we were going down the street, bumping the beat. And then he, uh, me and him were talking. Oh, somehow I was talking to you. And then. Uh, he he asked me to turn the radar down. And he was asking me about because I told him I said, "Hey, I wrote a movie," and I don't know if you remember that. He said, "What's the movie about?" And I told him what the movie was about. Um, and this brother, uh, it, you know, I want to share that story because it just meant a lot to me for what he did. Uh, I wrote a movie script, and uh, Coolio had had asked everybody to to be quiet so he could hear it. And it, it was just it was weird for me to be having a conversation. I think it was with you or somebody. And he's like, "Wait, wait, what'd you just say?" And, I, and he said, tell me more about the movie. I told, told him about the movie. He goes, all right, man, we got to talk. And that's all he said. And I just thought, okay, whatever. He, he, blowing, he gassed me up or whatever. So we wound up going to eat. I think we went by my brother's house. We went by my house and my kids came to everybody. I don't know if you remember that. We you know, took pictures with the kids and stuff. Um, we went on to go play and, 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 um, and um, uh, visit you know, visited the, the children uh, the, in the cancer ward or at Valley Children's. And uh, later on, um, you know, out, we, you know, we out, we went out, we hung out, we did our thing and everything. So we all had fun. And it was later on, um, uh, after connecting to, uh, with him through c- certain things, eating, hanging out, uh, we exchanged numbers, just like I did with you guys and Robert, a lot of the guys, right? Um, and so he says, "I'm, I'm gonna call you." And I thought, "Yeah, whatever. You're gonna call me, right? Right?" And uh, because we had, we had a moment where I found out that his brother—I don't know if you knew this—he had a brother, older brother that lived in Fresno. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know. So we had a deep conversation, talked for like a good. Seemed like an hour or something. And so um, some months had passed by, and I get this phone call, and he's like, it, it, uh, I actually, he said, I'm going to have a, a, a director call you. I'm like, okay. So I get this phone call, and this guy goes, hey, I'm blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm, I'm working with Coolio on some movies. And he goes, uh, uh, tell me about your movie. And I, I, I thought it was BS at first. I tell the guy about the movie, went through all that. 
And then later on, uh, you guys can read the the, the, the uh, rest of the story on Twitter on my Facebook page. Uh, my shout out to Cooley. I wrote that on there. But one of the things I wanted to get to without going along with that is that this dude, when we first hooked up with y'all, he had told us, he goes, you know Antoine belongs in the NBA. I'm like, he was telling me and Jerv this. He said, Antoine got crazy game. And I'm like, because, you know, yeah. as far as I know, you're just a TV dude that, you know, like you said, probably threw the ball up. They, they took it off you and then somebody really made the basket. I didn't know. Never saw you play nothing. Now, I don't know when Steph Curry came out into the NBA. I don't think it was 20 years ago, right? Mm -mm. He but was a kid. I, he was a kid. But when I <laughs> saw you play, you're, you're probably the – and I'm not saying this to gas you up because we go, we go back years, right? Me and you go back years, uh, uh, and I'm going to get into that as well. Uh, we, we both uh, were uh, part owners of an ABA professional team and all those things. But when I watched you play that game, bro, you didn't miss. I think you might have had 40, and, and that's the first time I've ever seen anybody – shoot the way Steph shoots now. You're the first person I've ever seen that just off of a quick dribble, bam. And I'm talking about everything you threw up was way behind the three-point line. So just talk to me a little bit about that because I remember you sharing with me that you did have an actual career in basketball in, in college or something like that, in high school, college. You were yeah. a standout, got recruited. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how you came to have those type of skills that really was shocking to me on an on NBA level? Yeah, I was a high school All-American at um... – at Rosemary High School. I'm Hall of Fame there for, I, like, got the scoring record and wow. stuff like that. So um, scored the most points and all of that, uh, the most threes in the game. You know, it, 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 it went down for me. But it was – I remember vividly my freshman year, I was playing JV and my coach was like, it, your shot don't miss, but it's a set shot. So you need to figure out how to get it quicker because these kids at this level is 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and they're going to be blocking it in the fifth row. Right. So I remember I saved up 150 bucks. I paid for the uh, Jeff Hornacek camp because, okay. you know, they, it wasn't like how they have it now. Like every, you could go to any trainer and all that now. But back then you couldn't do none of that. So just so people don't know, Jeff Hornacek, Utah Jazz, the man. Got one you. of the greatest shooters of, the greatest of all shooters time history. All time. One of the greatest 50. Yeah, the right. quickest really. He was Steph before Steph. Before with the Steph. quickest. Right. But right. He was 6'8". Okay. So it was a little different. But he had the quickest release. And I, I used to watch him play, and I'd be like, man, I want I want my shot to be that fast. And so when I got there, he was just like, I just thought I started practicing just with my hands. And he was like, no, it's your footwork. It's your footwork. So when I got to the camp, I just practiced, practiced, practiced. I missed a ton of shots. But I stayed, I stayed in that gym, just stayed in the gym, practicing the quick shot, practicing, 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 just getting the quickest release that I could get because I was so small. I didn't, you know, I really didn't have no moves. Like Steph, he dribbles the hell out the ball. I didn't really have handles like that. I could, I'm A to B. You know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. I didn't really have all the creative, but I could come off that screen. All I needed was a second to just get it up, just to get it up. And once I started doing that, my next, the next three years in high school was easy because could nobody block my shot. <laughs> so yeah, was, yeah. And, and I and I was it's crazy because I got to witness that. And I remember, like I said, we played in that celebrity game. It was almost like a joke because I felt like they had a ringer. You know, a lot of us came out thinking we were just going to smash on you guys as celebrities. These, these dudes can't play. And and there's been a couple of celebrities that I've seen. Like, uh, I was shocked at Terrell. A lot of people don't know uh, Terrell Owens. Uh, Terrell Owens got game. Terrell Still Owens, game. I had no idea. And he, he uh, you guys don't know who Terrell Owens was, uh, big time 49ers uh, receiver, uh, yes, playing sir. for the Cowboys. Hall this, of Famer. This dude, Hall of Famer. This dude in one of those celebrity games, I've never seen a guy take off. I mean, he had a body like LeBron. And uh, we were playing in this game, and he just took off from the side. And I'm like, oh, he's going to get hung. There's no way. And he just monster dunk it, dunked it. And I was like, what just happened? Like, this dude could really play ball. And, and a lot of people don't think that these guys can. Another guy who had a shot, not on your level, but had a pretty sweet little game was uh, Brian McKnight. I was shocked at his uh, little Brian, game. Back in the day, <laughs> B-Mac would dunk on you. And he hit you with a three. B-Mac would play. I didn't know that, man. I'm like, play. yeah, he was shocking, bro. He was shocking. So y'all wound up killing us in that game. I, I think I said, I think you led him about 40. And then me and Jarvis went on to go to L.A. We would meet up with you. I'm sure, you know, I actually got a chance to meet your wife and kids and went to your house. And uh, I remember watching you in the Pro-Am, the L.A. Pro-Am tournament. And you was killing him out there. So I was like, okay, this ain't no fluke. He's killing that was in the Drew League. In the Drew League. Yeah, that was in the Drew League. Yeah. Crazy, man. Yeah. Crazy. So I'm 47 go... now. So I, I, <laughs> I just had, I just, I still play in the ABA. We had a game this weekend in Frisco, but, um, but that was cool. My body is dead tired right now. I just got up. So, um, wow. <laughs> wow. And so, you know, if you don't mind, uh, just, you know, your relationship with Coolio, again, I talked about the little, um, 
uh, post that I put on my, my IG, my, my uh, Instagram, and my Twitter about what he meant to me in the story. And you guys, anybody who wants to see that story, go look at it. It, it was heartwarming. I think I kind of got watery eyed as I was as I was actually writing it because it just it just meant a lot to me what he did for me in that moment. Can you tell me about your relationship with Cooler and, and, and why was he such a big fan of yours and how close you guys were? Well, well, I met Coolio in the in Entertainment League. They used to have the NBA Entertainment League out here, uh-huh. and uh, I remember he wasn't on my team the first year. Okay, but, um, but I I just remember playing against him, and he used to always talk trash. Uh-huh. Like no matter how good you were, he was gonna talk <laughs> trash. <laughs> I just don't remember we played against him. And so after the game, I'm like, damn, do this dude not like me? So then after the game, we was in the locker room, and he came up to me, and he was like, hey. He's like, you know, I don't even talk a trash to you because you good. He's like, if you were sorry, I wouldn't have said nothing. I just because I'd be like, he's a lost cause. <laughs> like, I was like, that's dope. He's like, that's respect. That's respect. So the next season, he was on my team. So he played on my team for like, I think Julio was with us about maybe four or five seasons. Wow. Got a championship together and everything. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, I used to talk to that guy for hours on the phone. And even when he had, I was filming um in North Carolina. I was actually in Wilmington, okay. but he lived in Charlotte. I didn't know. So a friend of mine, we had went up there for like CIAA or something and we went to hang out and I was just at this club and I kept looking over and I seen this um, dude with this hair and I'm like, look at this dude, with <laughs> Coolio out here. Like Coolio, I said, boy, that, that dude, no, he, you know, he, you know, he'd be like moving people to do what he do. Right. And then it was him. And he was like, Twan, what's up, my boy? And I'm like, oh, damn, what you doing down here? And he was like, man, I live out here. I got a cooking show. I got a restaurant. I got the dead. I was like, oh, damn, I didn't know that. But, yeah, that was a real good dude, man. I spent long nights up talking about basketball with that dude over the phone. Oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? That he was with me through some of my journey, like when I went to, like, the NBA Summer League in Vegas before they actually televised it, because now they televise it. Back then when I was playing at, at Long Beach and, the pyramid or in Chicago when they had the, you know, they never televised it. So you didn't really get to see us play. You okay. know what I'm saying? So a lot of a lot of people didn't really know. So they, they would just automatically think, oh, he's an actor. He can't play. But I was like, I they got into it with a young kid the other day who's really good, actually. And I was telling him, he was just like, yeah, man, you just an actor. I said, yeah, but that's how I started acting. Right. Basketball. Who? Right. That's, that's they noticed me out here. This what made this what made that happen. Right. And so he was like, "Oh, I didn't know that." But he was like, "Yeah, I ain't think you was gonna make all them shots, but that's how I was noticed." So yeah. it is what yeah. it is. Yeah. But yeah, Coolio, yeah. real good dude, man. Rest in peace, man. I hate I hate I couldn't go to the service, but yeah, that was a really really good inspirational dude for me, for real. real. Dude. Yeah, real good dude. And it's funny because he's one of those guys like kind of like what people talk about. Cat Williams, I got an opportunity, and I, I'm probably gonna bring my buddy Andre uh, Covington on that. Uh, had me hang out with Cat Williams on his tour bus for a couple of days. And uh, back when I owned my smartwatch company and we were doing an iWatch trademark, he bought like, I don't know, like 50, he, he bought like 50 watches and just gave out the, uh, what's, what's the dad from Friday? Uh, Weather, Weatherspoon or whatever. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, John. Yeah, yeah, John he, he passed away, but he was, it was me, cool. It was me, Cat Williams, uh, uh, John Weatherspoon, uh, from the dad from Friday. It was, uh, uh, Suge Knight was there. Uh, uh, Monique and I'm uh, not Monique, but the uh, the one girl who played in uh, Friday, the, the 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 brother's dad's girlfriend, the the um, can't think of her name right now, Shimon Simone or something like that. So, anyways, um, uh, Cat you know uh, Cat Williams was one of those guys who, when you talk to him, you don't realize realize how intelligent this dude is. Cooley was one of those guys that was super duper mm-hmm. intelligent. All that There's, other stuff was part yeah. of his his deal, but that dude was smart, bro, smart. Yeah, real smart cat. Yeah, and you know, pops rest in peace. He he did Black Jesus with me. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, they, they yeah, bought a bunch Black of Jesus. watches. Yeah, they all, they all got uh, watches from my store. So um, um, one of the things I want to talk about before getting into the ABA, uh, can you explain this clip here? Uh, I don't know if you can actually see it, uh, but it's, uh, it's a wonderful lifetime. I'm going to play it real quick so people can see it. Give me one second, Tom. It's a wonderful lifetime. My best friend needs guidance through her breakup. She's trying to give me a date for Christmas. What I have before me is the Christmas contract. The cast of One Tree Hill reunites for Christmas. Hillary Burton, Robert Buckley, Tyler Hilton, Daniil Ackles, and Antoine Tanner. I would have missed out on a lot if my sister hadn't drafted that contract. I wouldn't have gotten to know you. The Christmas contract, Thursday, November 22nd at... Okay, so it was called the Christmas contract. Was that like one of the get-togethers you were talking about with the One, one Tree Hill cast, or that was a movie? That was a movie. Okay, okay. So, all right. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, for those of you guys who haven't caught any of Antoine Tanner's smash hits, 
any of his uh, uh, number one ranked uh, TV shows, go out there, make sure you Google his name and, and uh, go check him out. What's the, I think it's IMVD, and you can see everything about Tuan. I think the count was like 70-something movies or something like that, Tuan. It's just, it's amazing for someone who just tried out and then uh, to have that type of uh, resume is just unbelievable. Um, the next thing I want to get into is the ABA. So we had, we were friends and we had saw each other throughout the years. Um, and then I can't remember the exact year, but I own, my wife and I bought uh, a partnership in an ABA, which is under the NBA. So the ABA, uh, you could probably give a little bit more uh, uh, information on it. You played in that for many, many years, dominated. Uh, I think you guys won some championships. Uh, at the time, my team was very competitive. We played you guys a lot. I didn't even realize you were uh, that you owned or you were part owner of the team. And so we went in. I wanted to invest. At that time, I got out of uh, some of the other stores I had. We, we tried our hand in the, in the, in the uh, music industry, uh, uh, did that for a while, and kind of tried around with that. And then I said, you know, let's invest. I was always looking for things to invest in. So we invested in the ABA team. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, you see a lot of the uh, NBA guys that either don't play no more, they come into that league, or guys trying to get to the NBA uh, uh, or yep. that league. I know Dr. J played in the NBA, uh, ABA and things like that. Uh, back in the, the day. Yeah. Back in the day. day. And, and then uh, when Dennis Rodman left the NBA, he went to the ABA. Uh, Master P played in the ABA, right? Um, yeah. uh, I think he was like uh, part owner of the team in Vegas. So uh, we bought this team and, uh, you know, was part of that whole thing for, I think, for a couple years. Um, and then uh, I ran into your team and, and uh, I know we would, sometimes you guys would beat us, we would beat you guys. But yeah, talk about that ABA experience. And, and it was just crazy how we reconnected in the ABA again, me as an owner, you as an owner slash player. Uh, and just, yeah, just talk about that and what that meant to you. Well, it was fun because I remember playing in ABA years ago when they actually had a bunch of money. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, <laughs> I don't have to go overseas and miss my family. I could actually play local, stay at home. And it was just like a regular job at that point. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if you if I wasn't acting and usually around the time acting, if you're not on a show already, you're usually doing nothing for those few months. It's kind of like a hiatus. So it's like, if I'm gonna do this hiatus, I might as well play, stay in shape, stay competitive, and make a little money at the same time. So it's like a, like a, another job, right. you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, because ABA season always starts like basketball season, like middle of November, right. you know, and it ends like in early March. But uh, if I could make the games from like November to like the end of January. And then if I was filming and I had to go back to work, you know what I'm saying? Right, Other right. than that, I could play the majority of the season. And then I wasn't, we didn't film every, we filmed every day, but I didn't work every day. Gotcha. And I was in LA a lot. So, cause we filmed in North Carolina. So I was back and forth, back and forth. So um, I was able to participate cause a lot of the stuff was on the weekends. All the ABA games either Friday or Saturday or Sunday. So it made it kind of like perfect for me. But I went to championship with the Atlanta team. I went to championship with Maywood Buzz. Um, Nova Stars, we actually won a championship out here, West Coast uh, Finals. Um, this year, we're not doing too good thus far because we've been like, you know, losing players to to the water and stuff like that. We lost like about three or four players to overseas, wow. which is great, which is great for them. Right. Not bad for the team right, right now, but right. good for the team in a sense because the team is actually helping you get somewhere. That's right. You know what and, I mean? and that's what, really what it's all about is trying to have yeah, that big payday. Them. It's like a stepping yeah. stone to get to that big payday. Right. Yeah. Right. Helping, right. helping some of the players get out of here, get across that water, get a contract so they can take care of their families. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Getting the exposure. But we just lost to the um, San Francisco City Cats by two points. That's right. Yeah. We shorthanded. You know, we were shorthanded, but we went out there having this televised. You know what I'm saying? It's televised and everything. I had to send you the link. Yeah. But uh, real good game. You know what I'm saying? But really good competitive, competitive stuff that's going on. Especially, I'm just happy to be able to compete at 47 years old right, against right. 20 year old. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, exactly. I'm, exactly. You know, I I like the 40 and over leagues now a lot better than the, the 35 and then. Than that twin, than that open division, because you'd be dead tired after. Well, well I, think, I think it's different too when you got a quick step. You've always had a quick step, and then if, even if even if that that's not the case, one of the things I saw that you do that you started doing towards the the latter part of your years is coming off screens because that jumper is still wet. The jumper leaves last. That's the thing, you know everybody say that jumper leaves last. That's right. That's right. All the rest of them moves. Yeah, they yeah. gone. Yeah, they gone. <laughs> they go. Quick first, the quick first step. Yeah. What, what, it's quick the, to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they quick to them. Right, right. <laughs> they, 
to the front. Yeah, your mind still tells you things, and that's that's when I had to realize I had to hang it up. I was I was um, uh, doing my times as a speaker. I was over in the, uh, South America. I had a huge team out of South America, and I think I was out in Ecuador. And some little kids, I went out to go watch these kids play, and I had my sweatsuits on, and they were like, they were like, "Hey, I'm six foot eight, so they're like, can you can you dunk the ball still?" I'm like, yeah, you know, my mind still tell me yeah, I could dunk the ball. I didn't warm up none, so I grabbed the basketball. I went to go go dunk and got hung, fell back on my back, got up. I said, that's it, that's done. I'm done. No more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gonna feel that on Wednesday, and it's, and it's Monday. And you oh, still gonna feel it? Oh my gosh, yeah. So you know, I got you by a few years, man. I got you by a few years. So before we get into crypto and what we're doing with crypto and, and NFTs and things that we're working on with you and so, several other celebrities. Um, just really quickly, what else do you have going as far as any any shows coming up, TV shows, movies, anything you're working on? I know you, every time I call you, see me, hey, Jim, get ready for an audition. I'm getting ready for an audition. And and I know there's things that me and you talking about working on that I, I've, I've committed to work, you know, investing in some of your movie projects and things like that. Uh, the market's down right now, so I say, Twan, give me a little moment. Let this market get right. <laughs> but uh, what, what, what other things you got going either personally or uh, in the in industry? Well, I got a couple projects. I'm going to help one of my friends out in a couple of weeks. Um, actually, not a couple of weeks. Actually, in a week, they have a, a idea for a TV series. And uh, they want to shoot like a sizzle reel. Okay. So I'm going to help my friends out with that. Um, I have um, I produced a show called Mad World. You know, that's the one, one of the links that I send you. And then I have another one that uh produced with my good friend, Miko Grimes, called uh, Ho. Okay. H-O-E. That means happiness over everything. Gotcha. But, um, it's like a, it's a girl show, okay. but it's a really, it's a really good one. We've been in the film festival uh, circuit for a minute, just trying to get it, you know, trying to get it funded so we could, you know, produce it and, and get it out to the TV. It's just, you know, sometimes the, the big shows, they become big shows because they have people that back them, but that don't mean that they're better shows than the, some of these other shows that's out there. So right. Now, at this point in my career, you kind of look for the quality of the product gotcha. that, that you want to do. And you say, OK, cool. This is a really good show. And I think this could last. So I think I'm going to like step over here. It don't pay right away. But sometimes, you know, there are like I said, there are actual better right. quality like shows and stuff that's actually on. And than the, what the money comes on the back end based off of how it actually performs. The the back end gotcha. is totally different ball game. So, you know, I stepped a little bit more behind trying to be behind still in front of the camera but behind the scenes a little bit because right. that's where this is you know to understand i've been doing it so long now it's kind of like hmm right they've been making this much money off of us all of these years that's right i'm the product they selling me now it's time for me to sell me. Stop saying, yeah and it's kind of it, it reminds you of the story of floyd mayweather and how he's like hey you know i'm, I'm gonna <laughs> let me take control of this so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that, let that's me, awesome that's awesome yeah so then that way you could get the you get the big payday. You get the big payday. That's you right. can create and you could go find other stories that you know is good that can, you know, reach out to different people. Like I said, you know, just looking at what we have with Mad World, that show is could be huge. Now I'm looking at all the stuff that's on TV and then I'm looking at what we got going. That's right. Yeah, people will watch this because right. I'm 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 really hard nosed when it comes to what I would watch. That's right. It takes me a while to watch certain stuff, but that I would watch and everybody that I've shown it to is like, oh yeah, that's it. I would watch that. You right. know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, exactly. so if, if you got all these people saying that they were watching and I got other people who would be committed to me to come in and help me out to do, to add their ex expertise, acting expertise, like the Hillary Burton and Sophia Bush and Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Chad Michael Murray, you know, like all of my friends from the One Tree Hill world and the right. Walking Dead world. Right. And then all my, my friends from the Coach Carter worlds. That's a good clash of a melting pot of talent that I'm in the middle of. Right. You know what I'm saying? That everybody can come together to make this beautiful product. And now we all get paid for it That's instead awesome. of letting, letting the studio get the money. That's right. You That's see right. What I'm saying? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I and mean, just keeping us as employees to where we can actually be employers. And now, you know, because so many people come up to you and say, well, Tuan, my daughter, she really wants to do this and she really wants to do that. Uh, you know, how can I get her in? Right. And a lot of times I have to just, you know, I keep it real and let them know, hey, your daughter probably going to be a waitress. You know what I'm saying? Right. Waiting, on this, waiting on this to happen. Now, right. she could be one of the lucky few. Right. But and she could be as talented as all get up. But if you're not presented with the opportunity. Right. It's never going to happen, you know, overnight because sometimes it's political. That's right. That's right. But if we as actors 
we might see those people and go, hey, she's actually good. Right. They didn't give her that chance. That's right. I got this show that I could give her this chance. Right. And right. I could I could break that face. Right. And it don't have to be as hard up. And then that way we had a relationship to where we could help get them better because we've been in front of the camera. Right. We behind the camera and also still in front of the camera a little bit to be able to teach them right. to get them over that hump because we didn't have that help That's right. when we were in the game. You know what I'm saying? It, either you went in, you booked it. If you didn't book it, nine times out of 10, you didn't get a reason why you didn't book it right. to help you get better, to help you, you know what I'm saying, to go over here and take this class or right. go over here and do this. This is what you can do is study. Like Everybody's not that fortunate. That's right. That's right. I was fortunate because I was able to take a little piece from Sam. Right. I was able to a little piece from Denzel. I was able to take a piece, you know, a little piece from Andre Bauer and, you know, and Richard Roundtree, some of the cats that I work with, I was able to take a little piece from them because they actually was gems. They gave you that game. Right. But now it's, you know, nobody really gives them the game. It's, right. I actually think it's harder to get in the business, but easier to book because of the, since COVID, the way the auditioning is set up now, everybody just self tapes it and sends it in. Oh wow! Yeah, the internet's made yeah. everything simpler. <laughs> they made, yeah, they made it real. They made it very simple, right. so that way you can mess up eighty times. But that also doesn't take away from that person could have did that one take really great. But when they get on set, they don't know what they're doing. Gotcha. Us as actors, we know where we're looking for. Gotcha. We know what we're looking at, and so it's easier for us to break new talent. Right. And say, okay, that person is good. This person is good. Okay, she could be good, but I could tell they're nervous today. Right. But let's look with her and see if we could get this. You see, how we right. could create content and we could create how we want to look and certain stuff that we want to portray to the world. Right. And it's, it's just different for us now. So I've been, like I said, st taking a little step back, but not a big step because I've been actually auditioning for some stuff. I just haven't haven't booked it because now I'm in the, I'm not the high school kid no more. Right, 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 right. I could play the high school kid's dad. Right, exactly, exactly. So it's a transition. It's a transition for me right now because I sometimes don't look like I could be that kid's dad. I still right. may look like I'm this kid's just a couple <laughs> right. of older right. friends. Right, right. So right. it's kind of a curse and a blessing, but I'm right, right. there. In the right there, right. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And, and uh, it's funny because my brother actually, Jonathan, owns an acting school out in Florida. And so... Uh, I've seen him a lot of things, commercials. I'll be watching TV and see him on and things like that. So, yeah, definitely amazing. Let's talk about crypto, man, and, and uh, won't get too much into it because I know we're running on time right now. But uh, I know we're working personally on NFT for Antoine Tanner. Uh, I'm excited about the project. Uh, some of my friends over at Dad Bods and those guys are, are working with you right now. Uh, we're, we're also helping you with your crypto portfolio and things. Let me, let me just ask you this before we, uh, we move on uh, and cut this short uh, uh, um, um, as far as... Um, your crypto experience. Why do you think so many actors and entertainers are in crypto? Like, like, uh, you know, why do you feel that, uh, you know, so many people are attracted to crypto right now? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody always wants to make more money or make, you know, just have like a different stream of income coming in. If you could have it, you know what I'm saying? You know, I know a lot of people, they invest in restaurants and all different kind of products, whatever it is that they got going on. So right. passive income is never a bad thing right. because, you know, acting is seasonal. Right. You know, one year you could book 10 jobs and the next year you might not work at all. So, right. you know what I'm saying? What can you do once you create a lifestyle to be able to keep up your lifestyle with money coming from this if this is dying down? Because, you know, you got to think about it. COVID was a couple of years ago. Yeah. And everything was shut down. Yeah, that's crazy. So the only people that, you know, you got people losing everything during COVID. Jeez. But if they had something else going on, they never missed a billing. You know what I'm saying? Right. So with the crypto, I mean, you know, I, I know a lot of people, they get scared of it as well, because in a sense, it's, they look at it like, you know, it's playing the stock market. It's gambling. Right. You gamble. Right. One day you could be up, you could be hot, you could be hot, you could be hot. Then the next day, everything took a dive. You know, it's just right. busy. Right. It is what it is. But if you could get in and you could be one of the recipients and get that lotto ticket, why not? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and that's what it comes down to is really finding, you know, early projects, great projects with great utility. And these are things that I'm working with you on and will be, you know, just as a friend because, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. But uh, as my man, uh, I'm helping you build your portfolio and, and, and uh, we're going to be doing some things in crypto and, and film and all these different things. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and I think you hit it on the nose because, you know, I have a daughter right now who's uh, um, dating an NFL player and I won't get into names and stuff like that. But one of the things I was talking to one of my boys who are in um, 
sports is that, you know, back in the day, these basketball players, football players, what they would do is try to open up a restaurant and, you know, let the family run that or open up a car lot or open up a cell phone store, you know, just something to figure out how to make money so that, because you got to stand, you know, uh, one of my good buddies is a Hall of Fame football player, uh, uh, Lorenzo Neal, he said that uh, NFL amongst the players, sometimes they, 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 uh, they use it as an acronym of not for long. The average NFL player sometimes don't even have more than a three-year career, right? It's a knee injury or some type of injury that takes them out. Yeah. So these guys are always trying to plan. I mean, obviously, my friend Lorenzo had like a 17-year career, but not everyone's that fortunate and blessed, right? And so right. a lot of times these guys are trying to figure out what to get into, and they may or may not have the skill set. They may have to trust somebody else with their money, and, 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 and more often than not, you see a lot of these guys lose money or their businesses don't survive. And so I think that's what's so attractive in my in my eyes uh, um, and from my uh, perspective of why people look into crypto because it's something that's really simple. Um, you, all you have to do is be a great student uh, and and just and just understand that you know it's really the future of, of, of where everything is going. It's the evolution of money. And so, I mean, you've had these conversations and uh, and so I, I'm definitely looking forward to working with you more, not only in your NFTs but helping you. Uh, and, and what I love about you too. You know, it's funny because I told Twan, I said, hey, I got these guys been doing NFTs. And, and Twan just started throwing names at me. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to get you. I can't think of the girl from, uh, from uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Family Matters. And you just started saying, I got plenty of celebrities for you to work with. And I'm like, whoa. So that's one of the things that I appreciate, that I do appreciate you about you, Twan, is that you're always throwing, you know, uh, people my way. And, and you want to help a lot of your friends. And I think this is the, the, the way to do it in, in the acting and the Hollywood uh, scene. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, my wife told me I need to stop doing that, but I'll do it for Cherry all day long. Today's her birthday, too. I got to call her in a minute Okay. Um, to Cherry Johnston, actually. Uh, but, you know, it's certain people that I always throw people that, that I always believed in. You put it in the universe, it comes back 10 times over. That's right. So That's right. if, if I'm in a room and I know somebody, I said, oh, I know what he would be perfect. And then I would call and put that person on to the money, you know. And just sometimes, you know, I know everybody ain't like you can't expect the you out of everybody because everybody don't do what you would do. That's just me. I feel like if I do it and I put it from a good place, then I'm going to drop their names to, you know, and if they make a hundred million dollars, cool. I don't ask for nothing in return. I just, you know, if I was able to make the connection, I try to make the connection, Right. you know, and, no. and that's that. So, you know, when you say, oh, I got crypto and I tell somebody, hey, my boy got crypto. You know anything about it? I don't really know too much about it, but hey, it's a good way to try to make some money. I know a lot of people that have made a lot of money off of it. And maybe who's to say we could be next? That's right. You that's right. never know. Right. Well, my goal is that you've always been a, a, a real, a real guy. You always been uh, someone who's been super cool. One of those guys that I know if I went to L.A., I have a place to stay. Um, really giving dude, really outgoing dude. And so I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you spending your time with my Crypto for Life group, uh, letting everybody get to know who you are. And uh, we're going to be working on some things that are going to be coming back to. As I invest, I'm going to be bringing some of those uh, things to the Crypto for Life family, letting them be a part of those things and part of you know anything that I do. So I'm really excited about that, Twan. I want to thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you, my brother. Uh, I'll probably be calling you later on today or tomorrow so we can we can chop it up by some of those things. But, hey, anything else you want to uh, leave with before we get off? Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good, man. I, I, I look forward to it, and uh, hopefully everything be blessed for us, and That's we right. have a great new year. Well, I appreciate you, my man. Tell the wife and kids we say hello. We'll talk to you guys. Antoine Tanner, appreciate you, brother. All right, fam. All right, buddy. Bye-bye.